feminine insight into the provider mindset. Hello, my name is Chengi. I am your dating and relationship expert here at BlackSwanRelationshipAcademy.com where I teach you ladies how to present as a high value, high status, high worth, feminine woman that masculine men absolutely adore. If this is what you're into, what you want to learn, you are in the right place where we're going to be doing a lot of training for more courses on feminine mastery, on how to really build attraction, energy mastery, which is coming up and is discounted for an early bird price in the link below. For pretty much everything around dating, how to flirt, how to date like a high value feminine woman, how to show up emotionally with emotional mastery and not be needy and thirsty. We have tons and tons of courses in the academy and even more being created as we speak for you to really, really ramp up your dating and relationship game. But here today, I want to talk to you about really, truly understanding the masculine provider mindset. So let's dive into it and really answer some questions. This is not all there is to it, but we will start here if that's okay with you. I want to just talk briefly, hopefully. I want to briefly touch on the difference between an affluent man who is a provider and a provider. Okay, um, sometimes because of the world that we live in, we believe that a man has got to be affluent to provide. This is not true. What we require is important based on where you are in life, based on your age. You know, a 20-something year old man is hardly going to be an affluent provider, but that doesn't mean that he does not feel a deep sense that it is his job to provide and protect, that he doesn't see it as his responsibility and that he doesn't show up in the best way that he can and take you to the places that he can afford and take care of that. A 20-something year old man cannot be required to be affluent for him to therefore qualify to be a provider. This therefore means that to be a provider and to be affluent are two different things. It is also very possible for a man to be very, very affluent but fail to be a provider. The point I'm making, ladies, is that, and I've done again another video on low-value rich men, so you can go and watch that. But the point I'm making is affluence and provider are not the same. What we need to really be concerned with is whether a man believes that it is his role and it is in his instinct to naturally take the role of the provider, to feel like he has to take the lead when it comes to providing and protecting. This is what we first need to establish before we can even call a man a provider. Because there are a lot of men who don't earn a lot of money but work very hard to make sure that their wives have everything they need. I have friend, a friend right now whose husband is not affluent, but he works every job God sends so that she doesn't have to, so that he can come home to a beautiful home and to a happy wife who looks lovely. He has married her like most masculine men marry for sexual and sensual stability. What he married her for was to secure his sexual stability, to know that he's got a sexy, beautiful woman at home, that he doesn't have to go out onto the street and find and, and pay for dates and do all these things. He's wanting to secure his sexual stability. And so he knows that he has to provide for her to be rested, to spend the day doing stuff that will make his home because sensual stability is also very important for masculine men, which is why I taught, teach you ladies to be a feminine fantasy and have a beautiful home because these things matter. Masculine men love to come home to a beautiful home, to a clean, tidy home, okay? So so when they marry, they are securing their financial, their, their sexual and sensual stability. And they understand a truly masculine man knows that if his wife is having to work and pick up the kids and do all of these things, she will not be able to perform sexually because for a feminine woman, for a woman's body responds to stress way more than a man's body. 
that means that if we have a hard day and we're feeling stressed our bodies are going to release cortisol and that cortisol is the big bully of estrogen our estrogen is going to suffer um, and we are going to literally kill our libido libido is a very interesting thing because it for a woman, we use libido to do things too. It takes libido to make money. So if a woman has been using her libido in the workplace, working her butt off to help her husband to have this lifestyle um, that he can't afford to provide by himself, and then she's got all this cortisol, basically this man has failed to secure his sexual stability because now she's always got a headache, she's tired, she's not in the mood, and a lot of married man can, men can go for three months six months even a year without having without making love to their wives because their wives bodies simply cannot produce the hormonal cocktail that is required for her to even be aroused by him and then he will think oh it's because I don't go to the gym it's because she is stressed because you're putting her in a position where you are not providing the provider mindset man knows that if he provides, if he makes sure that his wife is at home and rested and keeping a sensual home, when it comes to that good, good loving, she is more likely than not to be willing to give him what he needs because he gives her what she needs. And of course, cherishing is involved in this. And of course, we're talking about a woman who doesn't have children because even homemakers get stressed by having children and so a provider mindset man would provide the help because he understands that a woman's biology is different from his a man has so much more testosterone he can go out to work all day then work an evening job and still want to have sex when he gets home because of the testosterone in his body means that he's handling his cortisol way better and is actually building up more testosterone so when he gets home he wants to release right to a woman who's probably been working hard and had a terrible day and she's not able to meet that need so ladies we need to understand that there's always deeper stuff at work that we're not being mean to men or making these entitled requirements that they provide we as feminine women want to provide a man because we want to be able to provide for him sexual and sensual stability. We want to be able to keep a great home that is orderly and beautiful. We also want to be able to say yes, big daddy, when he wants some of that good good. This is why we want a provider mindset. Not because we're trying to be gold diggers, but we know that we cannot meet our end of the bargain if we are stressed trying to pay the bills, stressed trying to keep this lifestyle going. Now, when it comes to having a provider and you choose your provider, be conscious of his competence and capability level. What can he capably and competently provide? Ladies, we can't close our eyes to what a man is capable of providing. If he lives in a one bedroom apartment, that is what he can capably provide. If you come in and say, well, if I add my 50% to your 100, we can live somewhere bigger, better, brighter. Then you have signed yourself up to being the provider. You've signed yourself up to a lack of equitable deal because he's still going to require sexual and sensual stability from you but now you are so heavily invested in this lifestyle because you didn't want his 100% because you look down on his 100% we need to stop dating men who have lifestyles that we know will not satisfy us or meet our need and then start pressuring them or helping them to create the lifestyle that you want you're better off assessing and dating men who are capable competent and willing to provide at the level that you have become accustomed to if you are in a two-bedroom apartment and he has a two-bedroom apartment yay if he lives in a better neighborhood than you even better or he lives in a similarly good neighborhood even better what he is saying is this is what I can 100% provide and you need to be down with that program and a lot of us are so not willing to be realistic and real we end up finding ourselves supporting these 
ex these luxurious and expensive lifestyles that are actually at the end of the day going to cost that relationship. You're better off supporting him, being loyal, providing what he needs within the context of what he can provide so that he can do more and be more and provide better than giving him a, a, a pass or, or a free pass to a lifestyle he cannot solely provide for the both of you. And I've seen a lot of marriages in this mess where a, the woman is working her butt off three or four shifts in a nursing job. And nurses, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but you are an endangered species, right? And, you know, they do these nursing jobs and the man is... You know, he can, and then they buy these big mansions because they want to live well, right? And you've got this man who's literally following behind you, who's incapable of providing this lifestyle for you. And now he's using whatever money he has to be dealing with women who have less than you because now he's feeling emasculated. And you are vexed and angry and hurt and full of stress and cortisol is going through your body. And now you are incapable of actually respecting this man because you know that you're holding this whole financial setup up. It's really very important that we are smart when we're making decisions. And it's really very sad when a woman comes to me and she's already married this man because now the dynamic and to fix it is going to take way more than it should have. And you single ladies, you have the advantage of actually making a better choice and really determining, okay, he is a provider. The next question is, is he capable and competent? Now, I want to talk about how, what is going on in the provider mindset. When does a man provide? A provider provides all the time, okay? And the reason why this, now that doesn't mean that we cannot offer to help. It doesn't mean that we can't, after he's paid for, you know, five dates, or whatever few dates, we don't buy him a gift, or cook him dinner, or, Offer to pay a bill occasionally. This is okay. It's perfectly fine when you're in a relationship with a man to give him stuff, to pay for stuff now and again, but not at the level that he does. Perfectly fine. But at the end of the day, he really should be doing the lion's share of giving and providing. So he should really consider it his job to pay all the time. And one of the things with feminine men is they'll pay, they'll pay, they'll pay, and then they'll be like, hmm, you don't pay for anything. You take me for granted. This is because they're not trained in masculine thinking. The masculine man does not expect the woman to pay for him to feel appreciated. He feels appreciated because she validates him for his giving. She is the woman that's like, babe, you're an amazing man. I really appreciate you paying for that. I really appreciate you providing for me. I really appreciate you being wonderful and not only saying it, but being respectful of the provider. Opportunity for you to check yourself and really um, get to grips with, am I validating enough? Am I showing enough appreciation? Am I celebrating and praising him for when he does provide? Girls, it's totally unacceptable for you to be with a provider and take it for granted and not say thank you. And I'm not talking about thanks. I'm talking about looking him in the eye, squeezing his hand and saying, thank you, baby. Thank you, sweetheart. I really, really appreciate you doing that. Thank you for dinner. It was lovely. You have to be appreciative. Otherwise, a man is going to think you're on to some gold digger move. Okay? The next one is, when does the masculine provider need help? Yes, ladies, there is a time when even the most masculine provider will need help, financial help from you. But when are these times? Now, I'm going to give you an example of my friend. Her husband is a full-on masculine provider, classic, classic masculine male who makes sure that everything is taken care of financially there isn't anything that she ever has to open her purse for and god forbid she tries to this doesn't mean that he doesn't need help it just means he doesn't look to her to help him he will find a solution take an extra job talk to you know find a way but he doesn't see his wife 
as or his woman as the way to help, right? I need help. I'm going to look at my woman to, to help me financially. He, he will think of other ways. But it doesn't mean that as a high-value feminine woman, you can't perceive when your man needs a little bit of help and do it in such a way that honors and respects him and his masculinity. So they had a bit of a situation where a big massive bill comes and he, when I say classic masculine man, I mean she has his bank cards, she has access to every single bit of money he has, his savings account, everything, he, he gives her access to all of that. Um, and he doesn't even look at the bank statements. All he says to her at the end of the month is everything paid, babe. She says, yeah, everything is covered. And that's all he needs to know. If if there isn't enough, then she he wants her to tell him, oh, he didn't manage to pay this bill, and then he will go and sort it out. Um, but in this instance, she was able to see that, oops, we're not okay. It's a few rough months. Things were not good for them at that time. A lot of stuff was going on. And you know what she did? She just paid it. So every month he would come and say, everything sorted, babe. Is everything paid for? And she'll say, yeah, it's covered not knowing that actually for the last three or four months she's actually been paying and eventually they got a massive bill and you know she paid that and he was really upset with her for doing that because she obviously had to own up because it was quite a big bill <laughs> it was massive so she couldn't just pretend everything was okay and i'll tell you what even though he was upset that she just went right ahead and fixed it and didn't let him do it um I know that afterwards their relationship was even better because now he knows he has a woman who has his back. He knows, even subconsciously, he could tell that, how come I'm still paying for everything? But even a high value masculine man does really truly appreciate a woman that is able to help him without poking him for it or reminding him about it or letting him know that he wasn't man enough to make it happen and she needed to step in respecting his dignity and his integrity as a masculine man because he does see it. He does know what she's doing for him and he loves her even more and he will love you even more. Sometimes as women, we do need to step in and be a help meet. We need to help him without throwing it in his face one day. This is not about taking care of a man, paying his bills, moving him into your life. I'm not talking about anything ridiculously like that. But now and again, when a man is and established his role as a provider in our relationship, in our marriage, he's going to have moments when things won't be working in his favor. And in those moments, he requires help. And we should not be resentful. We shouldn't be allowing him to go out there and break his back trying to fix a problem that you can easily fix in a creative way and in a way that doesn't make him feel like he owes you. I know a lot of these relationships, sometimes a man will even say, no, I'm gonna have to pay you back, I'm not having it, and he'll pay her back. But even if he doesn't pay you back, and if he's, even if he's not that guy who offers to pay you back, what matters is that we understand the provider mindset, that this man wants to give. He wants to give generously. He desires to ensure that you are comfortable and happy. Ladies, I would love to say that they're teeming on the earth. These men take time to get to know. You have to observe, you have to sit back, and you have to really watch and see how does this man move. And then you will know that you are with a provider. And then you will know how you need to position yourself as his respectful mate. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that it helped. And I will see you soon, either on one of my courses or in Black Swan Nation with a high value bunch of women that get instant and constant coaching from me. I look forward to seeing you soon in my next video. But in the meantime, take care of you. Love you lots.